This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1000, Optimal Living Advice, by Greg Audino with oldpodcast.com. And I am your host and narrator of the show. My name is Dan, and welcome to this 1000th episode of Optimal Finance Daily, and thank you so much for helping us to reach this huge milestone. Now, this is where I typically narrate an article for you every single day of the week on personal finance, but today's a special episode, of course, with it being the 1000th, and we've got a new podcast actually called Optimal Living Advice that answers your life questions, and we thought that today we would share an episode with you right here. You can find and subscribe to the show by searching for Optimal Living Advice in the podcast app of your choice or wherever you're listening to this. So please check that out, and you can also actually send in your own questions to be answered on the show. The host of Optimal Living Advice is Greg Audino. He is a certified life coach and actor, and if you send in a question to that show and it's answered, we will send you a book from our collection, whichever one you choose. So definitely do that. Search and subscribe to Optimal Living Advice to show your support, and here is a question and answer from the new show as we optimize your life. How would you advise someone who feels they are at a personal crossroads between staying in their current location to enjoy their newly improved health and work on some wellness goals versus using bandwidth looking for opportunities in their desired next place to live? I love questions about personal crossroads. They they always throw me for a loop and I put off answering them for a little bit because I get nervous about telling people the wrong thing. (laughs) Uh, no, no, it's cool. This question in particular actually sounds like a wonderful crossroads to be at. So let me start by saying congratulations on your newly improved health and what seems like a really strong desire to keep growing as a person. These are all very wonderful things. Of course, I don't know anything about you beyond this question, but it seems to me you have a really growth-based mindset as every aspect of what you said is laced with growth and expansion. And why not? It's wonderful to be excited about new things and new opportunities, and I'd bet this mindset has already enabled you to make wonderful changes in your life thus far. But when it comes to making major life decisions like living in a new place and taking on a new job, having a really forward-moving mindset can sometimes get us into trouble. It's obviously healthier to have a growth mindset than a fixed mindset, but too much growth or latching on to what appears as growth can really keep us from making strong commitments to things. Moving is a really great example, as it's one of life's biggest changes and upheavals. I want you to ask yourself what you really want out of this move. Why do you desire to live in this new place? What is the motivation behind it? How do you feel now about any moves you've made in the past, and what have you learned from them? So whether your answers to these questions leave you a little uncertain, or maybe even leave you more inspired to move than before, it's really crucial to understand that moves, or any major life changes, only solve so many problems. And for each one they do solve, a new, unique problem will come up. I am in no way dissuading anyone from making a move. They can be wonderful, and the changing of our environment can be a huge catalyst for lifestyle changes. But it should not be seen as a means to solving deeper problems that require more focused attention, which is how it is seen a little bit too often for me. Constantly seeking bigger and better changes in life will make us more and more susceptible to dissatisfaction with anything leaving us with too few commitments and a really hard time feeling capable of generating new commitments, okay? This is how too much of a growth mindset can get us into trouble. The more we see how we can improve, the harder it is to see the good in what we already have, or at least how we can extract that good. For those of us who make wellness a regular practice in our lives, God bless us, uh, this is something we run a higher risk of. So much desire and so many options, they can really cripple us as we hop from hopeful solution to hopeful solution, waiting for the one that keeps us constantly happy, which we won't really find. But in spite of that perhaps grim and uh, morbid sentiment, no, I am not saying you shouldn't make this change. Just be mindful of this change, as I'm sure you already are if you're sending in this question. It's so easy to get clouded with emotion, though, and seek justification in our impulses. So Uh, I'm going to give you an exercise I use with my coaching clients a lot that I really enjoy, and I think they really enjoy. (laughs) So what I'm going to have you do is create a pros and cons list for the place you already live in and for the place you might like to move to. Now, each side 
might have some of the same pros and cons too. For example, perhaps you can enjoy your newly improved health and work on wellness goals in both your current location and the place you're thinking about moving to. Perhaps you can pursue new opportunities in both of those places, and it doesn't have to be one or the other. Once you have the pros and cons listed, go a step further and assign a certain number of points to each pro and con relative to how much they mean to you. For example, one location might only have closer to family and more affordable as the only pros, whereas the other location has closer to the beach, better political beliefs, better nightlife, and more work opportunities. The second location might have more pros, but if each of those pros are only worth, say, three points, and the pros on the other side are worth eight points and ten points, then the location with fewer but more meaningful pros will have more points and maybe reveal itself to you as a better decision. Does that make sense? Now, ideally, you'll be able to fit all of your non-negotiable desires into one place. That would be great. But what this exercise allows you to do is hone in on what you really want out of life. Be realistic about how well suited each location is for those wants and make the most out of what will be inevitable sacrifices. Whether it's a place to live, a job, a relationship, or whatever, there will always be things we're missing out on when we choose one direction over another at any crossroads. So, no, you can't have it all uh, in that regard. But that's okay. The biggest nag when making these decisions is the voice that says we didn't choose the right option. Getting clear about what means the most to you and doubling down on those things is your best bet in making a peaceful, committed choice. All right, so that was a question and answer from one of Greg's episodes, and it would mean a lot to us if you would check out and subscribe to that show as well. It's Optimal Living Advice, and you should be able to find it wherever you're listening to this show. Thanks so much for doing that and for your support and for being right here at Optimal Finance Daily for 1,000 episodes. We definitely could not have made it this far without you coming back each and every day to listen. And that's gonna do it for today, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Friday show where your optimal life awaits.